Hello everyone, welcome back to Machine Control PLC Programming. Uh, in last video, I introduced a lot of uh, concepts and terms. I apologize if it's a little bit overwhelming. Right. In this video, uh, I'll try to make our learning uh, easier a little bit right, by slowing down and uh, talk about the sequence bit design. Right. So hopefully that will help you to understand this concept. Uh, of course, uh, if I simply repeat what I had last uh, video, that won't help uh, help us to understand, right? So, but uh, in this video, uh, we're gonna talk about not only the uh, the drill, we're gonna add another tooling clamp. So we design both tooling together by using sequence bit. So I hope in this way uh, you can fully understand the process of the design. Uh, before we move on, uh, I just want to uh, talk about the, the sequence, repeat that a little bit. So I just want you to realize uh, something uh, uh, predefined with our imaginary machine. Right? So with the, the drill, it's very simple, right? So the home position is all the way to the top. And over here, that's the uh, the sensor to detect the position. It's what we call the retract proxy. And all the way down here is the extend proxy. Right? So the home position at the beginning, the drill should be all the way up to make the retract proxy on. And then whenever the drill come down, this extend process will become true. Right? So uh, when we add the uh, clamp, you will see here uh, at the bottom here, uh, I have a green block. That's the part I use to represent that uh, the part. You can see here there's a part present sensor. But the proxy, uh, I set up the, uh, in this way uh, on purpose. and. You can see the the uh, the clamp position at at over here is called retract proxy. And if the clamp move to here, to this location, which is the home position, is the extend proxy. All right. So that means uh, the clamp at the beginning of the machine should be at the extend position. Then when we need to uh, to use the clamp to fix the part, we need to retract the cylinder. So it's over here is like the cylinder body, right? So that will retract the moving part back to the uh, location on here, right? So um, I set up this on purpose. I just want you to realize uh, for the machine home position, not necessarily all the tooling go back to retract, so that the drill is at the retract position. But the home position for the clamp is at the extend position. All right, so I, I just want you to realize the difference out here. Of course, uh, uh, some of you may understand uh, for flu power. So if the cylinder, if it's pneumatic or hydraulic, uh, this is not a euro setup. Normally, the uh, home position should be retract, and when you try to uh, fix the part, you need to extend because when you extend the cylinder, it has more power, more force. Right? So that's normally in the industry will set it up. But for the discussion purpose, uh, I just set up in this way. Let us know uh, the tooling could be any position for the home to start the machine. Okay, so <coughs> uh, over here I just uh, read, read, repeat what I just talked about, right? According to the production requirement, the home position is clamp extended, right? Pay attention on here, the drill retract. That's a uh, normal uh, situation we would expect. Right? And then, when we start the production, uh, the tooling sequence in the auto mode should be the clamp retract first. Right? So 
uh, you don't want the part move around before you draw the hole. Right? So clamp retract, then the drill extend, draw the hole, or punch the hole, whatever you need to do. Once you finish, the drill retract. Then after that, the clamp will extend, open up, then you can remove the part and load a new one. Right? Uh, so in order to refer this process in the shorthand notion, we will use the uh, the letters. Right? So like this, clamp retract, that will be uh, recorded as the C minus, and drill extent will have D plus, and D minus will be uh, retract, draw retract, then clamp extend. So that's the notion we will use in the following design steps. All right. So when we start to design the system, we're gonna use two uh, uh, different uh, uh, two, di uh, two different method to help us with the design. One is what we call a displacement diagram, and the other one is called sequence bit chart. All right, so I gave those two names, let us to uh, start a design process. All right, let's look at the details. So first, for the diagram, displacement diagram, right, so you can see here, uh, uh, visually, we trace the movement of the tooling. So we have a drill start at the retract position. And then once we're going, uh, Oh, sorry, in the same time, the clamp start at extend position. So it's like the home, right? So once we start the production, the clamp will start to move. Right? So to change the location, the drill will stay stay there, no, no change. So the clamp will change from extend to retract position. And then after that, we'll stay there for the next two sequence. Right, start from the second sequence, the drill start to move. Move from retract position to the extent. And notice here, uh, I include those two memory bits. Right? Because remember we talked about on the previous video, we need the memory bit as a sequence to remember uh, the tooling position after the tooling return to the home. Right? So that's crucial in order to avoid the uh, repetitions, uh, in order to, to let the, the tooling stop after you finish one part. Right? So that's why you can see here, clamp move from the extend to the retract position. At that moment, we want to record the retract memory. Same thing for the drill. When drill start from the retract position, extend to the other side, we want, at this moment, we want to record this memory. So after that memory being recorded, and of course the, the rest will be the same thing. Uh, there will be the one I just talked about. The drill uh, will return back to the home position, uh, which means drill finish the cycle at this moment. But because we already recorded this memory, so we know we finished one cycle. We don't need to repeat to extend again. So that's crucial. Same thing for the clamp. When clamp move from the sequence three to sequence four back to the extend position, which is home, right? You can see here, same as the home position, you want to indicate the clamp also finished the cycle. And because we have this memory, so we don't have to go back. Right, so that's uh, the, uh, in the dark one, we look at the whole process. Uh, after that, uh, I also include the uh, the proxies, right? So the, uh, you understand the on and off, right? So we can use that as a trigger to set up the sequence. Right? For example, at the beginning, the drill retract proxy is on because that's home. Right? And at this moment, you can see here at, at uh, this vertical line here, that correspond to here 
when drill start to move from the retract position to the extent. When that happened, this proxy will delay a little bit and start to turn off. Right, so that's what you're supposed to see. And then this proxy will turn back on when the drill re retract, which is corresponding to this movement back to the home. Right. And but if you look at the drill extend proxy, and that only turn on when this happen, right? So when that extend uh, being uh, extend being reached for that, so that corresponds to there. Same thing for the clamp. All right, I don't need to repeat that. You can trace that by yourself. So over here, I list them. It just let you know uh, for each sequence we need. To use those proxy sensors as the trigger. So this is the one tool we're going to use uh, to, for design. Right? One is the first one is the diagram, displacement diagram, so we can visually look at the movement of your tooling. Then the second help we can get is the sequence bed design chart. All right, so the, the chart is over here. Uh, I need to talk about this chart a little bit because uh, this is the last design step before we go into the coding phase. All right, so this is crucial to understand how do we use this chart to design the program. Let's look at the first one. So we want to spe specify the, uh, the home position and tooling sequence. So each sequence occupied one row, only one row is showing here, right? So over here, because uh, the, uh, the slide, all right, so it's supposed to have four different rows, but I only have one row here. Uh, the home position, if you um, look, remember what we talked about, right? So the home position for the clamp for C is supposed to be extend. So I'll go back a little bit, refresh your memory. So you can see here, uh, home position, clamp extent, right? C plus, C plus, that's the position for the clamp at home. Right? So that's why we write down here, after we look at the requirement and look at the displacement diagram, we know the home position for this machine, the clamp should be extend and drill should be retract. So I use minus to represent that. And after that, we have to record the tooling movement for the sequence, each row by row, right? They're supposed to have four different rows, right? So you can see the sequence at least here, right? Home, C plus, D minus, sequence is C minus, D plus, D minus, C plus. All right, so over here, that will, the first row, row will be C minus. Then, of course, after that, I'll just write down on the side here. Supposed to be second row should be D plus. And D drill retract. Then clamp uh, extend back to home again. So they are supposed to have four different rows. Okay, let's look at the second bullet over here. Choose the sequence bit that will trigger the tooling action. So that's talk about here. You can see here, I leave the blank on the memory bit. So always consider the cycle bits, right? So you can see here, these two cycle, I already include them by default. They are, they are always there. But for the memory bit, we have to choose according to the specific sequence. So I list the remainder here. If the home position is extended, include the retract memory. So that you you can understand, right? So home position is ex extended. Then some time during the process, you have to retract right, to the other side. And when that happens, you want to record it. So that's why when home is plus, you need 
include the retrack memory bit in the chart. All right, so that correspond to our clamp. Our clamp, the home position is C plus. So that means we have to include the, sorry about that, RET, uh, uh, doing the best I can. So we need to include the clamp.ret memory bit in there. But for the drill position, it's the opposite. So if the home position is retract, include extend memory. Right? So remember that drill at the beginning, home position is retracted. So sometime during the process, we need extend it, which we will have to include in our design. So that's why over here, this drill should be extend. I'll just use EXT, extend memory. So in this way, we include all the sequence bit, these four bits, into our chart. So this is the second bullet. Over here, each row should have a unique combination of bit values. Right. Then let's look at the first row on here. When machine first start, and uh, all the bit should be zero. So the clamp retract memory should be zero, and this should be zero, and this should be, they all, actually they all should be zero at the beginning. All right. Then let's look at here, you will understand why the next row is different from the first row. There's a column called updates. So we need large or unlarge the bits, the sequence bits, right, at the end of the sequence. So we we'll latch the memory bit at the cycle start, uh, that's uh, related to the detailed program, I'll, I'll talk about that when we get there. So let's talk about here. At this column, right, so the tooling action is the retract clamp. And the starting condition for the sequence bit is all zero. Right, so we need to extend, uh, sorry, we need to retract the clamp. But once we finish there, we, when we get there, we need to update the system. So that means we need to set or latch, all right? We need to set the clamp dot extent. Oh, sorry, retract. I forgot. Retract memory. R E T M E M. So that is what we need to do at the end of this sequence. So after we latch it, the next sequence, when we start, when we try to extend the drill, we need to look at the, the values of the sequence bit. So if you look at now, the clamp RET memory has been latched at the end of the previous sequence. So that's supposed to become one. And then all the other bits haven't been changed yet, they all be zero. So you can see here, these two columns are different. So that's how we organize the sequence according to the process. All right. So uh, my writing over here is not very clear, but next slide, you will see the clear result on here. So this is just, I just wanted to, uh, uh, give you the clear result what we need to do on here. So that is the finished diagram for the displacement and also for the chart. So I put two of them into one slide. So that's the movement, you already understand that. And then we finish that, right? So the first row, uh, home position over here, tooling sequence, C minus, D plus, D minus, C plus. So each one occupy one row. So the first row, we already talked about, talk about it from the first slide. They all start with zero. And then uh, at the end of this sequence, the first sequence, we want to set up the clamp retract memory. So as a result, that will become one uh, here. So you can see here, uh, to start a sequence of extend the drill, we should see this bit is one, 
all the other three become zero. So that's the starting condition. Then we will output the drill extent. So at the end of the sequence, we need to set the drill extent memory because the action is extend. As a result, we need to record that being accomplished. So uh, as a result of that last bit, you can see here, this column, the drill extent memory, will become 1. So that will be the starting condition for the next sequence. So in order to retract the drill, we need to check all the four bits with this combination, 1, 0, 1, 0. All right, so when we finish the this particular sequence, this action, the drill finished what it's supposed to do. You can see here, that's why when we get the end of this sequence, we need to set the drill cycled. And that is exactly happened on here. You can see here. Right. So that's why we need large this or set this sequence, uh, uh, the drill cycle bit. Then, in the same time, in order to repeat the same cycle next time, we have to release, re reset, or unlatch the memory bit we did on this step. Right, so, because we return back, so we don't have to uh, stay on here. So we we already record that sequence in the with as cycled, right? So the memory bit finish what it's supposed to do. We have to clear that to zero. So after that, you can see the last sequence will again as a result less bit being cleared to zero. That's because of that, right? So that's the combination of that uh, reset, and then. The drill cycle bit become one. That is because of this set action. So in this way, you can see all the four different rows. They, each one of them has a unique combinations of the sequence bits. So that's where we need to program because they are all different. So they won't uh, out of sequence. Every step they knows uh, what's supposed to do. Right, in the program. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, at the end of the last sequence, we'll do the, exactly the same thing. We set the clamp cycle. So if you look at here, that will be corresponding on this step. The clamp finish cycle down here. Then, uh, in order to repeat the sequence for the next time, we need clear that to zero. So that is the action we need to take uh, being recorded on this chart. Right. So the next step, once we have this chart, we will just translate this design into the real program instructions. So that's all here. So for the next four slides, I will include uh, the chart on top. So then translate that into program. Right, you will see it's very clear step, very clear process. So we are doing the first sequence. We want to retract the clamp. You can see here, follow the arrow. Eventually, we're going to energize the clamp retract output. Right, this is what we do for the first sequence. But before we start, we energize this output, we need to have a setup, the pre-setup as an intermediate result. And that pre-setup is a direct translation from your chart. You can see these four instructions is directed, translated from the first row here. Because they all have a value of zero. In order to make that become true, we have to use exam of, exam of, exam of, and for the zeros. But before that, I include here, there's a condition we all include cycle start. Right? We, uh, we talked about this before. 
the cycle start condition comes with when you work in the auto mode and also operator press the cycle start button. Right? So that's the moment we want to start the machine production. So that's why we have to include here. So otherwise, um, your machine will, uh, will start the process without auto mode. Right? So that's the condition to set up. So now on the second run, before we energize the real output, we have two parallel branches. One is auto mode, the other one is manual mode. Right? The reason we already understand, avoid double coil syndrome. Right? So for the manual mode, very simple. We just use a manual push button to retract the clamp whenever we need to work into the manual mode. But for the auto mode, it's a little bit different, right? So you can see here, that's the that's why we have a separate run at the beginning as intermediate result that will be used uh, here, right? So manual mode is a simple button, operator press button from the HMI. But with auto mode, that's a some sort of uh, complicated conditions in the design. So that is the two branches, and after that, clamp retract proxy. So remember that that's the uh, target, uh, similar to drill uh, grass door. Uh, so, sorry, grass door lab. We are trying to get the uh, uh, retract position by energized uh, output, but we have to make sure uh, this proxy is not made. Right. When, whenever this proxy is on, that means we reach the target. We want to stop, so we want to de-energize it. Right. So that's why it's here. And this instruction is the interlock. Right. So clamp retract output has to be exclusive. Uh, what uh, uh, exclusive? Uh, it's in, in, incompatible with the other side output. Right. So. Uh, mutual exclusive, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> to to with uh, the the other side of all output, right? So we all, all, always include this instruction. Then the third round is the updates. Remember, we have the updates column here. This is what we do with the third round here. So we latch the clamp retract. So we set. Remember it. We latch it. Right. The condition to latch it. Retract memory. So if you go up a little bit, right? Retract memory is here. So we have to check the proxy, right? So that's why we need to check clamp retract proxy is made. In the same time, do sensor check. Right? We need to make sure the other side of proxy is off. It says for safe reason, right? Safety reason. You want to check both sensor conditions in order to before you make a decision. Then uh, even after that, we include a uh, one second delay. You can make it shorter if you want. When this timer is done, we latch the bed. And also in before, we also include the auto and start. So this is the first row according to this chart. The next slide, we move on to the second row. Right, so that. Even though it's a different role, but we designed the, the code in the same style. Right. So again, output is the drill extent. So you can see here that's supposed to be a drill extent output. And how do we start the extent output? We can work in two different modes. Manual mode, only a simple button. But auto mode, it has a setup. A preparation, and that is being done by the first run. And this run is direct translation from the second row value, because it's value one we use exam on. The other three are still zero. We use exam off to get logic true. And same thing for the third third run, which is to set up. The drill extend memory, right? So at this stage, you don't even need to take care of all the details, right? You just direct translate from this chart 
into your program. So number three on the chart, so we work on this road. So I believe we don't, I don't need to repeat everything, right? So you can see here, uh, value is one zero, one zero. So exam on, exam off, exam on, exam off. Correspond to the value. Then set up and output. And over here is a little bit different. So at the end of this sequence, we want to set up the cycle bed. In the same time, reset the extend memory bed. So the last spot we do for the output, and same thing for here, right? So uh, I made a note over here. Previous sequence bit latched. So that means if you want to set up the cycle, you have to be the other side first. Right? Then you check the proxy sensor. Uh, after one second delay, you latch the cycle bit. So cycle bit, it will be on. But in the same time, you unlatch this memory bit. So it finish what it need to do, right? So that won't uh, go into this run again. So because you uh, unlatch here. Right? So this is something a little bit different from the previous two step. The last uh, number four slides will be uh, exactly the same. And, same process as before, right? So you understand this, so you don't uh, need me to explain that anymore. Right? So uh, let me see here. Okay, next slide. Uh, I put all the program, the coding together. Right? Uh, so for you to type in, you can try it. So over here, uh, that's the routine of station. Remember, we have uh, to separate the coding into two se separate routines. One take care of the station, the other one take care of the tooling. So on the station routine, we take care of the mode and also the home. Right? And because we have both tooling in this design, so we have to check both tooling. Clamp extent is made but retract is off. Drill all the way up to the top and extend is off. So that's our home for the for the machine. Then whenever the operator press the cycle button, this will be recorded as the request bit. This request bit will carry on uh, here with auto mode. Uh, you have a part, this is a part present. You station home, which is you make sure you start at home position, and that's the cycle complete. Uh, it's like a stop button, right? So when do you want to start a cycle? When cycle complete, then you energize the cycle start. And this cycle start, remember that's the trigger for the tooling sequence. In the next slide, you will see that. All right. And then I mentioned that the cycle complete is like a second stop, the stop button, right? So when the cycle complete will become true is when both tooling finish the cycle. You can see here both tooling cycled and return back to home, right? So it doesn't matter what sequence the tooling will take. They both cycled, they finish their job and go back to home and then we said cycle complete, All right? So over here, I also include a XIO exam off of part present is necessary to avoid this uh, cycle repeat. So I just uh, make a note on here. Uh, in the next uh, video, I will do a demo. You will see uh, why uh, we need this to be here. Okay, so the next round, whenever we have the cycle complete, we will unlatch the cycle bit for the tooling because we have to process the next part. Right? We have to reset everything back to the initial state in order to repeat itself. Uh, handshake, right now, 
for the interlock, we don't have anything to in interlock with the drill station. So right now it's empty. Right. So we will talk about that later. The next slide is just for the routine R3 tooling. Right. So remember that they are the four different sequence. We already talked about that on sequence number one, sequence number two, and then sequence number three. Remember the chart and sequence number four. So I just put them together over here. Easy for you to tap in. All right. So this is the uh, the end of this video. Uh, on next video. Uh, I will show the uh, the demo, uh, the motion of the tooling. Then we will also do a exercise. So in order for you to get familiar with this process, I'll see you on the next video.